Hi, I'm Londa Rolfing. I've got the best job in the world in that I get to travel all around the country to guilds and stores and sewing expos, teaching my brand of creative sewing. Today I'm going to teach you all about elastic thread in the bobbin. There are so many possibilities and you can have so much fun with elastic thread in the bobbin, or even as I figured out in the chain looper of a serger that has that capability. Let's start out with what's most commonly shown and that is simply taking elastic thread and couching over it and then pulling up the thread so that it's as gathered as you desire. I really am not a fan of that technique. I don't think that it is very secure. There are so many factors that will determine how much pull up you get or you don't get. And the most important one that I figured out, first of all, is the thickness of the thread itself. You can see here the difference between a thinner elastic thread and a thicker elastic thread. These two pieces of fabric started out at 20 inches long and you can see the difference between how much more pull up you had with the fatter thread versus the thinner thread. Let me show you that on some garments that I've designed. I started out with fabric that was 60 inches long on this garment and used the thinner thread stitching in a diagonal pattern and it went from hem around the neck to hem. Taking the same length of fabric with the thicker thread, it pulled up this much. Isn't this an interesting collar? And how I did that was simply stitching great big serpentine stitches and then folding that it became that collar. Are you starting to see how much fun you can have with elastic thread in the bobbin? Steaming once you're done sewing is another thing that will shrink it up even more. And then stitch length. The longer your stitch length, this one was at five stitch length, this one was at three, so the longer the stitch length, the more pull up you're going to get. And believe it or not, even your presser foot that you use on your sewing machine. Now, I know a lot of you don't think much or understand much about your presser feet, so let's stop to explain that. As you're sewing regularly, you want to use a foot that's completely flat on the back so that it's creating a lot of pressure and connection between the fabric and the feed dogs. So it's feeding through simultaneously and, and pretty flat. If you do that, you're going to not get as much pull up as if you use the decorative stitch foot. The decorative stitch foot has been engineered so that it has a groove underneath it. That's because if you were doing applique or something that was building up a little mountain of thread, you would have to have a groove underneath the foot through which that increased thickness of thread could pass. So in my experimentation, I have found that I love the decorative stitch foot when I'm sewing on knits or when I want to reduce the pressure just a little bit so that the fabric can do more of whatever it wants to do. And in this case, that's pulling up more. So be sure to take a note of how the presser foot affects it. Then machines are made with two different bobbin systems. You either have a bobbin in an auxiliary case, such as this, or you have a drop-in bobbin, as I have on the machine I'm using today. If you have a bobbin in an auxiliary bobbin system that rides vertical, you want to be sure to get and mark an extra bobbin case because you're going to have to loosen the screw and do some experimentation until you get the perfect amount of tension on that elastic thread. Now, if you went out <clears throat> on the internet and Googled for elastic thread in the bobbin, I can guarantee you that you would find a lot of people telling you to simply take the bobbin and to start winding the thread on it by hand. I just can't do that very well. My fingers are in the way. And then you'll read some of them tell you to pull it as you wind it. Some of them tell you to wind it without pulling it. And I just don't think us humans are consistent enough to do that very well. So the scientist in me wanted to figure out a way to let the machine do it. So let's go to the machine and see how that works. So here I am at the machine and this is how I finally figured out is the best way to wind the bobbin. Instead of just pulling it around, I actually stick the thread up through the bobbin and wind it around by hand just a couple of times to get it within the system. Now you're not going to use the tension mechanism for winding the bobbin. Rather, you're going to have the thread directly coming from the bobbin down to the spool in your lap. And then Believe me, you want to set it on slow speed. Anywhere where you have that control on your machine, you want to set it on slow speed. And then what you're going to do is to control this monster here 
feeding the thread up and down on the spool as you go. So let's see if I can get this to go. Ah, there we go. So that's what you're doing. You're helping the thread go up and down on the bobbin, and that's how you wind the bobbin with elastic thread. Once you've got your bobbin wound, cut off that extra little thread at the top. It is so important to get it caught within the tension mechanism, especially for the drop-in bobbins. So I'm gonna put my finger on the bobbin and I'm gonna pull this up into the little arch, but I'm not gonna bring it all the way around. Then we have to put the cover on. Actually, I'm gonna leave the cover off. Hold the thread, turn the hand wheel, old-fashioned way, until you see that elastic thread coming up. If you've sewn for a long time, you know that this is how we always used to do it. <clears throat> you know that the thread is engaged in the lower tension if and only if you can see the thread going across the bobbin on the top. That's always true, but especially in this. You'll know very quickly when you start to sew if it doesn't pull up at all, then it's not caught in the tension. Here's some free motion work that I did. Do you see there's no puckering? That's because it was not caught in the tension. So again, always look for that thread across the top. I'm going to put my machine on free motion stitching. So I touch the button to lower the presser foot. And then I'm going to just cre create a taut situation. So again, I've dropped the feed dogs. Now I'm gonna put it on <clears throat> a faster speed. And you can just go wherever your little heart desires. Fun. Doesn't have to be exact at all. And look what I created with free motion with elastic thread in the bobbin on the purple top over here. The middle of that flower is nothing but a great big square on which I've done exactly what you just saw, a lot of big circles. And then around this square is a strip of fabric. I just took a one and a half inch strip of the cross grain knit and I stitched with elastic thread in a big zigzag pattern. Then this got tacked around the outer edge of the free motion work to create that wonderful little textural interest on that top. The other thing you have to think about is how much fabric is going to pull up to how much and where do I want it to be on the garment. So that's a mathematical thing. All you need to do is do a test. Take a 20 inch piece of fabric, run your stitches and see how much it pulls up to. So that's your proportion. So much of fabric pulls up to so much. Then you need to know on a garment, for example, over on the dummy here on the table, you can see around her waist or around the sleeves, you would want to know how much you want it to pull up to. Then solving for that proportion, you could figure out how much fabric do I need to start with. So that's all the fun of elastic thread in the bobbin on the sewing machine. But you can also do it on a serger. That's how it's done in ready to wear, where you buy the yardage that it's already done, that you just sew up the seam and make a skirt. Let's just compare how much it gathers up from the sewing machine to a serger. These two pieces of fabric started out at 54 inches long. Here's the machine, it gathered up to 38 inches, and here with the chain stitch capability on a serger, it pulled up 62%, so it came up to 21 inches. So you can see how much more gathering you can get using the chain looper of a serger with that capability. Let me show you how that works. You'll always want to use a thread net to help control this elastic thread. It will just go everywhere. So you fo follow the regular thread path. You don't want to miss anything. And then as you finish threading the chain looper, you want it to just fall down in here. You don't pull it up or anything. Then you're using, in this case, it's the middle needle. From the settings that are recommended on in your book, you want to, I have figured out, lower the needle one notch and the looper three notches. Let's see what we get. The other hint that I can give you about whenever you do chain stitching, 
with elastic thread and the chain looper is to always start by penetrating fabric. I've got my differential feed set all the way up to the most and a stitch length very, very long. You can see <clears throat> the gathers that I'm getting. Now, if I were making garment, I would just do row after row after row, but it's really hard to stop and start. So the other hint that I can give you is that instead of doing it just on the front of your garment and then just on the back and sewing the seams, is instead to sew the garment all the way together at the side seams and then do this in a tubular situation so you won't be stopping and starting. Let me show you on this piece. Do you see what I've done here? is that I've started, worked my way around, then kind of angled, come around and angled, and then left long threads, which then I tied in a very secure square knot a couple of times, and then added a dot of um, fabric adhesive. That was just so much easier than stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Again, you have to test to see, starting with how much fabric, with the certain situations that you've set up on the serger, and I'll review those again, gathers up to how much, and then how much does that stretch out to? So we have to put on our scientist hat a little bit as we sew. Again, on a serger, it has to have the chain stitch capability. I have found to lower the needle tension by one and the looper tension by three. I kept trying to come up with the same stitch that I saw in Ready to Wear. Look at this cute little top. It's just adorable. It's three rows at the side seams and three rows at the center front on four pieces of fabric. That's all it is. And then it's a knit, so the, raw, the edges can be raw. So this is just sewn wrong sides together. Can you see? Three rows of elastic thread, three rows of elastic thread. I've got this in process at home, but you could also do it on the serger. However, if you look very close here, you'll see a real chain type formation. That's done on a machine commercially that we really can't duplicate that exactly. So don't drive yourself crazy trying to come up with it. So there you have it, elastic thread in the bobbin on a sewing machine or in the chain looper of a serger.